Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you guys want to know how to paint characters like this guy here, stick around to the very end because I'll be going through tones, textures, different layers and how I managed to do a character in this style. I'll also be showing you how to do the background and basically everything I know about character design. So that sounds good to you, make sure to give this video a like and stay to the very end. Now let's go. First thing I'm going to be creating is a doodle grid. Now to do this, you just want to combine a load of random shapes, squares, triangles or circles all together so when I then take a picture, it gives me a good grid line of where my image is going to sit on the wall so I can get the proportions the right way and get all the shades in place so later on when I do add the colour, I know exactly where I'm coming from and where I'm going to go next. Next, I'm going to be using an app called Photo Layers where I'm going to take a picture of the wall, straight on, flat, and a picture of the original drawing. And they're going to import both images into the app, overlaying them so I can line up how big I'm going to go with the monkey image. Okay guys, now let me explain to you the next step. The next thing we're going to do once you've got the doodle grid and picture lined up, like so, is grab yourself the colour black to put the outline in. And the reason you want to put black in is because black has the darkest tone you can have and sometimes what you'll find is when you put the shades in place and then overlap with the colour even by mistake sometimes you create some really cool effects um, with nooks and crannies so yeah I'm putting all the darkest in first and then later on layering over the mid tones then the lighter tones but yeah take your time with this make sure all proportions are correct and then after the black's all down and it's correct and you've looked it up and it's viewed it then you start adding the colours and just to give you guys a little bit of my thought processes, um, before I even started the wall, I did a hand drawing first. Look how I only did the pencil work, and the reason being is because if I was to colour this, it would take me a very long time. And once I've coloured it once, you sort of lose the motivation to redo the image entirely again on the wall. So um, I put basic shading down with the pencil lines, as you can see. That just gives me an indication of what areas I should move light to dark and from there I'll just work from that position. So yeah, I'm just gonna now use my doodle grid and use the image I put over the top and take my time with it and get it done. And just a quick tip, there's literally um, no need to rush this part. So many times even with a doodle grid, you can throw your proportions off so I don't think this will always save you, but as long as you just take your time and make sure you just paint everything in the correct place at the very beginning, it's gonna take you a little bit of time, but it's 100% worth it at the end, because the main thing that throws off people's portraits or characters is a mistake somewhere. It could just be a little bit on the left cheek and it throws the whole face off. So really uh, take your time to keep referring back to your doodle grid and uh, just carry on building up from there. Another quick tip I'll share with you guys is as I'm going here with the initial doodle grid that's there, I'm actually using a white can to erase the, the lines. You don't have to do this, to be honest with you, I'm just doing it so you guys can see the black a lot more clearer, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. But if you're a beginner, you wanna just make the whole job as easy as you can for yourself. Um, so clean up every little bit so it's clear and easy to see where you want to put the colour will uh, really help layer on, layer on when you come to colour it in. Right, guys, if you've done that correctly, you should have something that looks very similar to this. All the black line work in place, ready to be coloured. Usually you'd want to do the background first with all the details and then do the character last but because I'm looking to colour the background of the tiger and the monkey in a session yeah I'm gonna wait till the end it might involve a bit of cutbacks but it's just the way I work and how I break it down so find your style and the way you work and then go from there so yeah let's jump into it
this is my favourite time, look at the colours. These are the colours I'm using for the monkey. Black for darkest obviously. A real dark brown, two skins and it's really light. It's almost uh, almost white to be honest with you. <coughs> so that's only five colours I got there and that's what I'm planning to use for the skin tone of the whole monkey. So yeah, make it simple as you can for yourself. Dark to light, that's what you're going to be working with. Okay, the first thing I look for is all the objects in the very far background. So obviously this is an eyeball, so the eye is pushed into the socket, so I'm starting off there. This way it just prevents a messy overspray from happening later on. Once the eye is in place with the white and the grey, I'm then going to use the dark tones first and make my way to the lighter tones. So as I'll start with the dark, then the mid, and then the light to really create this uh, sunken in eye look here on the monkey. Now I'm just using my mid-tone of the skin to fill in all the surrounding area around the eyes that I want to keep as that browny skin tone for the monkey. So yeah, I'm just going to fill it in and then later on I'm going to add the lighter and darker shades to it to give it more depth and give it more roundness to the eyes. Hey guys, it's now 2 in the morning. Uh, I'm paying for like... 10 hours today, this is day three. Um, and here's how far we've gotten so far. Ugh, sorry, I can't even think straight. He's getting there. Colour's in the right place. You need to build up the tones now and keep pushing forward. another thing shameless plug we now have new t-shirts in stock at comeho.co i'll leave a link if you want to grab yourself some be my guest if you don't well uh shame on you but yeah let's go okay once i've now got the darker tones in place as well as my mid tones just where i want them i'm then going to go back over the initial design with the black spray paint also, as well as putting in the lines, I add an extra bit of shade to really give the darker tones that greater depth. The more depth, basically, the more contrast you're giving your image and the more impactful it is to the human eye. So really work on balancing out the light tones with the dark tones and finding a nice balance between that. Here, once again, all the objects I want coloured in with this sandy skin tone, I'm going to pick one of the mids to put on as a base layer. And once the mid is all in place, then is the time when I start applying the darker tones as well as the lighter tones, picking up creases or indentations within the skin. So yeah, just uh, fill in all the bits you want this colour and then you can move on to the different tones. For the inside of the mouth, I want to give it more of a um, more of a pink textured look. So once I've applied down the dark black, I then lightly spray the pink over it, the mid pink, and then I move on to the lighter tones just to give it more more of the contrasted look from the inside of the mouth to the out. Once that's all in place and I'm happy with the overspray, I then go over the whole thing again with the black, putting in more detailed line work to give the um, impression that there's more going on in this area than just a flat colour. Once that's all in place, I then work on the things close to the foreground, building on the tongue and the teeth until I'm left with the mouth. Now I have the mid-tones in place, I'm now taking the darker brown and then putting that all in the places I want to keep the darker tones in the shadow or in the shading. 
Once I have all the darker browns in place, I then do a light mist of the black, which then gives it a deeper feel to it. Like I said earlier, the darker the tone and the lighter, the more contrast and the better the final image will be, especially when it comes to graffiti. And now for the actual hair, I've got a black, a light blue and a very dark blue. And I'm gonna use these three now to build up the shapes. What I'm gonna do is from the black is have the light blue come next to it so it's touching and then that be fading into the darker blue. Um, that way it gives it way more of a rounded shape, gives it a lot more dimension than just two colours. So yeah, especially having that light sitting on the black, that is like the old bit contrast touching there. So it gives it a really cool um, rounded shape. Now for the hands, I'm just going to do exactly the same as I've just done for the ear. I put in the darker brown tone in place and then taking my black can and lightly spraying over that darker tone. That way I'm giving it a whole new dimension and I'm cutting back with the lighter tones. And once again with the light skin tone, I'm just spraying that inwards so it blends in nicely into the middle tone. Um, yeah, so just keep going back and forth until you get a nice smooth transition until you're happy with it. And for this bit, it's actually quite interesting. What I'm doing is, is I'm spraying it with the mid grey all around the clothes, then taking my white can and holding it at a 90 degree angle towards the wall and shooing upwards to give the clothes a folded look, as you can see here. It just gives it a real cool dimension um, to it and gives it way more texture. Okay, now once you've got the character down, now I'm going to show you how to do an effective background. For this character here, I'm going to use a foresty type background using five different shades of blue, light to dark. It's really effective, really simple. So if you ever run out of ideas for your own pieces and don't know what to put in the background, um, this is an easy go-to. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, now because I have a blue tone down, a mid-tone already down, I'm going to take my lightest colour, which is this light blue, and I'm going to start doing these round off shapes at the very bottom and then pull a line straight up to the top to give these tree shapes. From the colours, I have five different blues. The darkest blues are going to be everything in the foreground and the lighter tones are going to be everything in the background to create a really in-depth feel for the, everything that's going on behind this monkey. Um, so yeah, basically I'm just going to start off by doing these top to bottom trees using the lightest tone that I have. And now I'm just going to copy that same principle all the way along. Keeping it, bear in mind it's the background, so I'm going to keep the spaces quite long so I can fit more trees in between um, the ones at the furthest back. So yeah, just make your way along until you're done and then move on to your next colour, which is your darker blue. And this time as you do the trees, make them a little bit thicker because they're obviously closer to the viewer, whereas the ones further back in the distance are going to be a lot thinner. So earlier guys, I said to you about doing the background first, this is why. Because otherwise you end up with this overspray, which just means you've got to spend another 5-10 minutes tidying everything up. But yeah, that's the second layer down of the blue. And now I'm going to take it a step darker and do the foreground now. So this is what you're seeing closest to the viewer. Um, so yeah, with that, just using the darkest blue, this one, here. Now for the good bit. You ready? Whoa. That's like heavy.
Right, that's it guys, we are done. I'm so happy with the, with the final result and the way it turned out. And I really hope that you guys got something out of this video, or at least learned a few tips and tricks to help you further in your art career. Now, if you really did like this video, please give this video a like, it really does help the channel grow. And I just wanna say a massive thank you to everybody over on my Patreon team, whose name I'd leave here. And um, any other things you wanna see, leave me a comment, leave me a like, all that good stuff, and until next time, Keep creating and stay positive.